Hello everyone, and welcome back to the Fluctus channel. Few inventions in history have proven more critical to warfare than the submarine. Since the First World War, submarines have played a pivotal role in dozens of global conflicts. And today, stand as both the biggest threat and the most significant deterrent of intercontinental ballistic missile warfare. This is because submarines thrive on the art of stealth. They can infiltrate enemy waters, attacking and then exiting the area before a counterattack can be launched. In this way, the biggest threats to submarines are other submarines, which use sophisticated techniques and advanced technology to detect enemy vessels, no matter how hard they try to hide. Military submarines can dive and surface at will. sometimes reaching depths of up to 1,000 feet. This process is accomplished by managing two factors, buoyancy and weight. To dive, the submarine takes water into its ballast tanks, which increases its weight and decreases its buoyancy, causing it to sink. By carefully controlling the amount of water in the tanks, the submarine can maintain the desired depth for extended periods of time. To the surface, the submarine expels water from its ballast tanks using compressed air. This reduces its weight and increases its buoyancy, causing it to rise. One of the most critical assessments of a submarine's crew and equipment is EHCTV testing short for Encapsulated Harpoon Certification Training Vehicle, EHCTV testing. This process is designed to certify a submarine's capability to carry and deploy harpoon missiles under combat conditions. The harpoon missile system provides submarines with a significant enhancement in their offensive capabilities, particularly against surface targets. It is designed for all weather conditions and can engage targets at long ranges, making it a strategic asset in naval warfare. EHCTV testing typically involves launching a training version of the Harpoon missile from the submarine. This training version mimics the actual Harpoon missile's size, weight, and operational characteristics, but without the warhead. The test assesses various factors, such as the integration of the missile system with the submarine's combat system, the crew's ability to handle and launch the missile, and the missile's performance during the launch phase. The heart of any submarine is undoubtedly the bridge. Also known as the control room, this is where essential navigation and operational decisions are made 
and where the commanding officer and other key personnel control all aspects of the ship. As with early submarines, modern nuclear subs still use periscopes. However, modern versions have cameras and sensors to relay digital images and data to screens in the control room. Nearby are the ship's sonar and navigation systems, radar, and communications arrays. These provide information on the ship's systems, including propulsion, electrical systems, and life support, and must be monitored at all times. While the commanding officers might get all the prestige, many experts consider the most crucial job on board a submarine to be the sonar technician. The men and women are primarily responsible for using sonar, or sound navigation and ranging, to detect, identify, and track other underwater vessels, objects, or geographical features. Sonar technicians are trained to analyze and interpret sonar data properly so that they can distinguish between other subs, surface ships, or marine life and assess potential threats or navigational obstacles. Sonar technicians work closely with other crew members, especially the navigation and combat systems teams, often providing vital information that aids navigation and tactical decisions. Sonar works by generating sound waves, which are transmitted into the water. They travel until they encounter an object, such as a fish, submarine, or the seafloor. The waves then bounce back to their source, creating echoes that technicians can evaluate. One of the many ways sonar is used is for detecting sea mines. In 2020, Northrop Grumman introduced a new mine hunting sonar known as AQS-24. They tested the equipment aboard a mine countermeasures unmanned surface vessel to prove that the mine detection process could be safely and effectively automated. The AQS-24 travels behind the boat, scanning the seafloor for anomalies, which can then be evaluated in real time. Northrop Grumman is not the only company looking to tackle the sea mine problem. In recent years, TAILS has partnered with the French Marine Nationale and the Royal Navy to develop two unmanned mine warfare systems. Similar to the Northrop Grumman design, the sonar buoys are pulled behind an unmanned boat. At the same time, artificial intelligence technologies are used to detect and identify potential threats hidden on the seafloor. Since even decades-old mines can still prove deadly for commercial and military vessels, it's hoped that these autonomous solutions will aid in detection and help prevent future incidents.
sonar has many implications outside of the military sector. For instance, in March 2014, Malaysian Airlines flight MH370 was flying from Kuala Lumpur to Beijing, China, when it disappeared from radar screens. An extensive international search soon ensued, initially in the South China Sea and then expanding to the Indian Ocean. Because it's theorized the plane crashed into the ocean, deep toe sonar equipment played a huge role in this search. Deep toe sonar is used primarily in marine research and exploration. Unlike traditional ship-mounted sonar, which is fixed to the hull of a vessel, deep toe sonar is attached to a towed vehicle or instrument that is deployed deep underwater, often close to the seafloor. This proximity to the seabed allows for more detailed and higher resolution imaging of the underwater features and objects. Most importantly, these systems can operate at extreme depths, several thousand meters below the surface. Numerous companies and organizations have participated in the search for MH370, including Ocean Infinity. Ocean Infinity is a marine robotics company that specializes in using robots to gather information from the ocean and seabed. For the search, Ocean Infinity chartered the Norwegian multi-purpose offshore vessel Seabed Constructor, deploying up to eight autonomous underwater vehicles. These AUVs were equipped with various scanning technologies, including side scan sonar, multi beam echo sounder, bottom profiler, high definition camera, environmental sensors, magnetometer, and synthetic aperture sonar. The search area initially covered 33,012 square kilometers, eventually expanding to 120,000 square kilometers. Despite extensive efforts, the search concluded without yielding any positive results. Ocean Infinity generally uses its sonar technology for seafloor mapping and exploration. However, sonar is not the only way to accomplish this. Another popular method involves using seismic surveying. Over the years, specific ships have been developed for seismic surveys. One of the most interesting and unique of these is the Ramform Atlas. At first glance, it actually appears as if half of the ship is missing, but this design is both very deliberate and very functional. One of a fleet of similar vessels owned by Norway's Petroleum Geo Services, the Ramform Atlas is equipped with 24 hydrophone streamer reels in two rows, with 16 reels in the stern and eight further forward. This allows it to tow a network of sensors over an area greater than 4.6 square miles. The Atlas is designed explicitly for advanced seismic acquisition programs and has already played an essential role in the ongoing search for undersea resources. Along with its sister vessels, the Titan, Tethys, and Hyperion, it will likely continue to serve in this capacity for years to come. That's the end of this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Make sure to subscribe to this channel so you don't miss any of our new content. 
See you next time.